This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. If you look carefully, you can see that the fur on his head hasn't quite fully grown back yet. He's learnt to interact with a computer for a tasty banana smoothie delivered through a straw. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone, just as you might pair your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. The links record from more than 2,000 electrodes implanted in the regions of Page's motor cortex that coordinate hand and arm movements. Neurons in this region modulate their activity with intended hand movement. For example, some might become more active when he moves his hand up, and others when he moves it to the right. By recording from many neurons and feeding their activity into a decoder algorithm, we are able to predict Page's intended hand movements in real time. First, we calibrate the decoder by recording neural activity as Pager uses the joystick to move a cursor to targets presented on the screen. As he's playing this game, we are wirelessly streaming, in real time, the firing rates from thousands of neurons to a computer. Using these data, we calibrate the decoder by mathematically modeling the relationship between patterns of neural activity and the different joystick movements they produce. After only a few minutes of calibration, we can use the output from the decoder to move the cursor instead of the joystick. Pages still moves the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, it's unplugged. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. Our goal is to enable a person with paralysis to use a computer or phone with their brain activity alone. Because they wouldn't be able to move a joystick, they would calibrate the decoder by imagining hand movements to targets. One of the things the Neuralinks allow Pager to do is to play his favorite video game, Pong. To control his paddle on the right side of the screen, Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. We've removed the joystick altogether. Now that he's up to speed, let's increase the difficulty and see how well Pager can play with the Neuralink. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. He's focused, and he's playing entirely of his own volition. It's not magic. The reason Neuralink works is because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. Great game, Pager. And what better reward for a monkey than a banana? Here we go. Great. Okay. Great. <laughs> so this neural link connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout. So whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. Uh, we have a uh, healthy and happy pig, um, initially shy, but obviously high energy and, and uh, you know, kind of loving life. and. Uh, she's had the implant for two months, so this is a healthy and happy pig with an implant that is two, month old, two months old and working well. Yeah. Um, and we've been able to show that you can actually have multiple neural links implanted, um, and again, healthy and happy and indistinguishable from a normal pig. So, um, so it's possible to have multiple links in your, in your head and have them all be sending out signals, and you're working well. This is our little device. Uh, it does, that, that thing at the bottom is just to hold the threads in place, because they're just like little fine wire, wires. So in terms of getting a link, like I said, it's essentially uh, you open a piece of skull. Um, you remove uh, about a coin-sized piece of skull. Uh, and then the robot inserts the electrodes. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, then the device replaces the portion of skull that was removed, and we, we basically close that up with actually a super glue, which is how a lot of wounds are closed, and, uh, and then you can just walk around right, after, right afterwards. It's pretty cool. Uh, what, what we're, <laughs> I mean, 
It's more complicated than this, but it's, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. <laughs> so, uh, and it, it's also got all, all the things that you would expect to see, the sensors you'd expect to see in a smartwatch uh, or a phone, like uh, inertial measurement, temperature, pressure. Uh, so there's actually a lot of functions that this device could do uh, r related to monitoring your health and warning you about a possible heart attack or stroke or other uh, damage, as well as uh, sort of convenience features like playing music. Um, you can do a lot. Um, it's sort of like if your phone went at your brain or something. Um, and we actually ultimately want this robot to do uh, essentially the entire surgery. Uh, so in, in everything from, from in, incision, uh, removing the, the skull, inserting the electrodes. Um, and we feel confident about getting the, uh, the link procedure, the, the installation of a link, done in under an hour. Um, so you can basically go in in the morning and leave the hospital in the afternoon. Um, so this, this shows you um, at a sort of close-up view, uh, which I think is actually not too gruesome, uh, of the electrodes being inserted in the brain. And if you look closely, you'll see that um, that's a, it's a little counterintuitive that uh, if the electrodes are 